Purposely. Your life, God's purpose. Listen at Purposely.com. You ready for a love triangle today on the Bible for Busy People? I'm Erica, your host. Before we get to that, let's talk about where we're camping this week. There are things that we can know in our knower about God. So far, we've gone down two amazing trails. Heaven is for real, and God knows us intimately, personally, and He wants us to know Him the same way. He made us. It's kind of like when you take your car to the mechanic, the mechanic understands how the car is made so he can fix it. It's why God is able to bandage your wounded heart. He made it. Okay, so today we're going to go down and explore another trail, the one that's marked God will provide. That's one of his names, Jehovah Jireh. It means God will provide. He will take care of you. It's one of his promises. You can trust him for financial provision, for peace that passes understanding, for anything you need. He's your provider. All right, time to talk about this love triangle in Genesis 16, beginning in verse 1. Now, Sarai, Abram's wife, had not been able to bear children for him, but she had an Egyptian servant named Hagar. So Sarai said to Abram, the Lord has prevented me from having children. Go and sleep with my servant. Perhaps I can have children through her. And Abram agreed with Sarai's proposal. So Sarai, Abram's wife, took Hagar, the Egyptian servant, and gave her to Abram as a wife. This happened 10 years after Abram had settled in the land of Canaan. Now, you can see and I can see that this is an absolute recipe for disaster, right? (laughs) We can look at this and go, not going to work, guys, don't do it. But how often have you and I done similarly crazy things? We don't want to wait and trust that the Lord will provide. We want to take the matter into our own hands, right? We're not so different. Verse four. So Abram had sexual relations with Hagar and she became pregnant. But when Hagar knew she was pregnant, she began to treat her mistress, Sarai, with contempt. Then Sarai said to Abram, this is all your fault. I put my servant into your arms. But now that she's pregnant, she treats me with contempt. The Lord will show who is wrong, you or me. Abram replied, look, She is your servant, so deal with her as you see fit. Then Sarai treated Hagar so harshly that she finally ran away. The angel of the Lord found Hagar beside a spring of water in the wilderness along the road to Shur. The angel said to her, Hagar, Sarai's servant, where have you come from and where are you going? I'm running away from my mistress, Sarai, she replied. The angel of the Lord said to her, Return to your mistress and submit to her authority. Then he added, I will give you more descendants than you can count. And the angel also said, You are now pregnant and will give birth to a son. You are to name him Ishmael, which means God hears. For the Lord has heard your cry of distress. This son of yours will be a wild man, as untamed as a wild donkey. He will raise his fist against everyone and everyone will be against him. Yes, he will live in open hostility against all his relatives. Little mixed bag there, right? Thereafter, Hagar used another name to refer to the Lord who had spoken to her. She said, you are the God who sees me. She also said, have I truly seen the one who sees me? So that well was named Bear Lahai Roy, which means well of the living one who sees me. It can still be found between Kadesh and Bered. So Hagar gave Abram a son and Abram named him Ishmael. Abram was 86 years old when Ishmael was born. Wow, right? Now, what would have happened if Sarai had waited on the Lord? Let's find out. Turn with me to Genesis chapter 21, beginning in verse one. The Lord kept his word and did for Sarah, her name has now been changed, and that's another story for another time, beautiful, exactly what he had promised. She became pregnant and she gave birth to a son for Abraham, his name also changed, in his old age. This happened at just the time God had said it would. 
I'm going to leave that right there because I know you're waiting for God's provision. He hasn't forgotten you. It's going to happen in his perfect time. Ditch your timeline and I'll ditch mine. Verse eight now, skipping down a little bit. When Isaac, the promised child, okay, grew up and was about to be weaned, Abraham prepared a huge feast to celebrate the occasion. But Sarah saw Ishmael, the son of Abraham and her Egyptian servant, Hagar, making fun of her son, Isaac. So she turned to Abraham and demanded, get rid of that slave woman and her son. He is not going to share the inheritance with my son, Isaac. I won't have it. This upset Abraham very much because Ishmael was his son. But God told Abraham, do not be upset over the boy and your servant. Do whatever Sarah tells you for Isaac is the son through whom your descendants will be counted. But I will also make a nation of the descendants of Hagar's son because he is your son too. So Abraham got up early the next morning, prepared food and a container of water and strapped them on Hagar's shoulders. Then he sent her away with their son and she wandered aimlessly in the wilderness of Beersheba. Maybe you're wandering aimlessly waiting for God to provide. Verse 15, when the water was gone, she put the boy in the shade of a bush. Then she went and sat down by herself about a hundred yards away. I don't want to watch the boy die, she said as she burst into tears. Hear this, my friend. Verse 17, But God heard the boy crying and the angel of God called to Hagar from heaven. Hagar, what's wrong? Do not be afraid. God has heard the boy crying as he lies there. Go to him and comfort him for I will make a great nation from his descendants. Then God opened Hagar's eyes and she saw a well full of water. She quickly filled her water container and gave the boy a drink. Wow, I want to pray for you right now. In Jesus' name, I pray for my friend who's listening right now and is crying in the desert season. They're in waiting for you to provide a well. Jehovah Jireh, we call on your name. I know you see their tears and I know you will answer. It's one of the things I know in my knower about you, God. You provide. Give them peace in the meantime and a glimpse of your provision in the name of Jesus Christ, I pray. Amen. You're really loved. Thank you for listening to the Bible for Busy People. I really enjoy our time together studying God's Word, and I'd love to get to know you. If you ever want to connect, feel free to email me at erica at purposely.com. We're a growing community, and you are welcome here wherever you are in your faith walk. Maybe you're ready to say yes to Jesus and to accept His love and forgiveness. You'll be starting the best journey of your life, or maybe you need someone to pray for you. Check out our show notes for more encouragement. Behind every good thing, there are amazing people who are using their time and talents to make it happen. Thank you to the dream team that makes this podcast possible. Debbie, Donna, and Rebecca, y'all are not only rock star colleagues, but dear friends. I love y'all. The Bible for Busy People is one branch on a tree called Purposely, a podcast network designed to help you find and thrive in God's purpose for your life. If you've got a pulse, you've got a purpose. And you are loved.